I was here almost a year ago talking about an ongoing issue some neighbors have had with noise. Now, nearly a year later, some neighbors are still frustrated. I'm reporter Olivia Acri in Fox Crossing with an update to this story. We told you about scores in Manitowoc and now their neighbors in Two Rivers are also getting low scores. I'm your Lakeshore neighborhood reporter Preston Stober finding out how the school district looks to turn it around and get better grades next year on the state report card. A massive new solar project recently got regulatory approval here in Fond du Lac. I'm your Fond du Lac neighborhood reporter Margaret Cahill and I'll have more on how a local farmer is partnering with the area's largest employer to make it happen. I'm Nina Sperano at the Ice Age Trail here in Door County. We'll tell you why a new National Park Service designation will make this trail more famous than it already is. Good evening. Welcome to NBC 26 News at 6. I'm Nina Sperano coming to you tonight from Potawatomi State Park, where the Ice Age Trail is now officially designated as part of the National Park System. Coming up, we're going to explain what this means for the trail and how it can impact Door County. We also have neighborhood stories from Olivia Acree in Fox Crossing, Preston Stober in Two Rivers, and Margaret Cahill in Fond du Lac. But first, we begin with Olivia Acree, who's been looking into why neighbors in Fox Crossing have been complaining about a local tree service. I'm reporter Olivia Acree in Fox Crossing, following up on a story about what neighbors say is excessive noise coming from Buckland's tree service. As I'm talking, this sound level meter is around 75 decibels, which city officials don't even consider enough for a noise complaint. But neighbors say it's much louder than that. I just got the constant noise. Gary Dorschner has called Fox Crossing home for decades. It's a driveway, but they use it as a racetrack. After years of disagreements with the neighboring business, though, he might not call it home sweet home. They have loud exhaust systems and motors, and they gunner all the time. And I talked to neighbors about this last year, and still, after years and dozens of police calls, they want a solution. If you go against them, he's going to seal you in. Dorschner is talking about the wall he says Buckland's tree service put up in his backyard. If I tried to sell it, how would I explain it? Why is this lot sealed up? I talked to village officials about the noise issue. They explained that there isn't much they can do. It's pre-existing, so that's the problem one that we have in doing any additional enforcement. Buckland sits on land zoned industrial. It's been that way for as long as community development director George Dearborn remembers. All this purple stuff is industrial. Police have responded to dozens of calls over the years, but have never cited Buckland's. There's a lot of them that were anonymous. So when our officers arrive on scene, they're not hearing anything. They have no person to follow up with and, and provide their findings with. While most neighbors' issues revolve around noise and the occasional dust, this wall put up by Buckland's cuts deeper for Dorschner. I don't see them getting better until they pull this stuff down and get the drainage back the way it's supposed to be. Fox Crossing police say they'll continue to respond to all calls to Buckland's and Dearborn said they'll tighten up zoning code in the future. I left messages with Buckland's tree service, but never heard back from the owners. Now we go to Preston Stover in Two Rivers, who has the results of the school district's report card. The state report card grades schools in Wisconsin on a scale of 0 to 100 and gives 1 to 5 stars based on their rating. I'm Preston Stober here in Two Rivers where the school district scored low. Earlier this week we told you about Manitowoc's low scores and now our community is asking what can be done to improve those scores. We've had a, about a 10 year decline in overall report card scores. Kyle Kornick is Two Rivers Director of Teaching and Learning. Now it's not going to take us 10 years to get back there. Um, but it is going to take some time for us to make some change. The scores are based on factors such as achievement, growth, and on-track graduation. Two Rivers comes in at a 51, scoring two of five stars in a category of met few expectations. Cornick says three changes that will raise scores are a uniform curriculum, systems that better attendance, and giving more data to teachers. We've done a lot around the concept of professional learning communities, of reviewing data, and then having teachers be able to take the information their students are giving them, turn around and have that inform their practice. I heard from multiple parents who said they're not confident in the school, although no one agreed to go on camera for an interview. But in the pickup line at J.F. McGee Elementary School, I talked with local mother Carissa Ellis. She said although scores are low, she's enjoyed sending her two kids to school in two rivers. From what I've seen, they try to make improvements and 
dedicated to hearing um, what the family's needs are as well as the students' needs and tailoring those needs to each student. Krista says her kids have prospered and she believes the district will get the scores up. As long as I know that my students are thriving and having their needs met, um, I will be happy. Kornick said based on changes the district has made as well as progress that will continue to happen, he expects the schools to be exceeding expectations three years from now. To read more about the state report card and see my report for Manitowoc, you can find it at NBC26.com. In Two Rivers, Preston Stober, NBC26. If you stepped outside today, maybe you just came home from work and you probably felt it was a bit warmer outside. From just 24 hours ago this afternoon, we were running around 10 degrees warmer across all of northeast Wisconsin. Lots of us getting highs in the lower and mid 50s. Now, we won't be unfortunately carrying over those conditions tomorrow if you're hoping to do so. There is some cooler weather on the way, tracking some rain showers moving in from the southwest. For tonight, dipping into the upper 30s, we'll talk more about that rain coming up. This is the Ice Age Trailhead in Sturgeon Bay in Door County. It's a well-known landmark in our state. It is a 1,200 mile stretch that highlights our state's natural resources that have literally shaped our state. The Ice Age Trail is a landmark in communities across the state and this new designation of a unit of the National Park Service is really a recognition of the hard work of volunteers over the last six decades. According to the Ice Age Trail Alliance, it will hopefully open up additional funding opportunities for the trail. The trail is definitely a trail in progress. We're at um, just about 700 blazed miles, so that means it's completed trail ready for hiking. Um, the other about 500 miles are on what we call connector routes, so those are the um, rural roads, back highways that, that connect existing segments. You know, all of the money that we raise that we get from the park service that we get from the state DNR goes toward completing the trail and um, filling in the gaps. If you look at the Ice Age trail map, it looks like a winding mindless trail wrapped around our state, but it's actually following the path where glaciers ended. So this trail is filled with a ton of glacial significance and hopefully soon federal funding can make it easier to access all 1200 miles of it. I'm your Fond du Lac neighborhood reporter, Margaret Cahill, at what may seem like your average family farm. But up in the air, we're giving you a bird's eye view of a massive new solar project that will offset energy usage for the area's largest employer. Olivia Halburn's family has lived on this farm for four generations. Come on, girls. And when she was first approached by the utility company One Energy about leasing her land for their solar project, she says she was a bit apprehensive. If we couldn't graze the sheep under the solar panels, we would have said no. We gave up our land for pretty much the rest of my life. But she learned how her sheep would benefit from the 12,000 panels. So the sheep will eat it and keep the grass below the panels so they're not shaded and still produce power. But if you were to come in and drive a tractor through here and equipment, then you're burning fossil fuels. She decided to say yes, bringing another source of income to her land. This is that dual purpose use. We're not losing the farmland where you are with other projects. This project is a collaboration between Alliant Energy and Mercury Marine, which is the largest employer in Fond du Lac. The energy generated by the panels will go into the grid and offset about 10% of Mercury Marine's energy usage. But what does that really look like? This energy will be able to power about 1,300 homes. This project recently got approval from the state. So I spoke with Chris Caparelli with Alliant Energy. Will this affect at all Alliant Energy using customers in Fond du Lac County? Yeah, so this project doesn't impact rates for any of our customers in the Fond du Lac area. So energy costs won't rise or fall as a result. And for Olivia, she's looking forward to another opportunity to give back. So we're not only feeding the community now, but we are giving them power. This solar site, 30 acres, is enough power for all the homes in our township which is pretty incredible. This solar array is set to be operational by the spring and we'll keep you updated on any future developments. In Fond du Lac, I'm Margaret Cahill, NBC26. The Mulva Cultural Center in De Pere is officially open. Mulva's leadership team held a ribbon cutting this morning to celebrate the grand opening and including comments from center co-founder Miriam Mulva and De Pere's mayor. The center has an auditorium, gift shop and classrooms a gourmet restaurant will be added next year. The Cultural Center is a $100 million project and 75,000 square feet. 
De Pere neighborhood reporter Carl Winter got a first look at the facility earlier this week, and you can watch his story on our website, NBC26.com. Santa Claus is coming to town a little ahead of schedule. Coming up, your neighborhood reporters can explain where in Northeast Wisconsin you can visit Jolly Old St. Nick this weekend. Now, NBC26 meteorologist Gino Recchia. With today's high temperatures in the lower 50s, it was the warmest day in close to three weeks. November 18th was the last time we had highs in the 50s, but there is some cooler weather on the way. Looking at the lower 48s, there is a little buckle in the jet stream with 50s right along Green Bay and points southward, but there's some 40s right behind an approaching cold front, and that's the cooler weather that's heading in here as we move into the weekend. Started off today with a little bit of high level clouds, but the sunny skies really controlled our weather for today, and that continued to melt some of the snow piles, which are getting harder and harder to see as we have been seeing above average temperatures over the last few days. But here comes the cold front moving in here from the southwest up to the northeast and a band of rainfall from Iowa down towards Kansas heading in towards our direction moving into the next couple of hours. Doesn't really look that impressive right now, but anywhere from about a quarter to a half inch of rain is not out of the question as we head into the overnight. So dry at the moment for about 9, 10 o'clock, but after 1, 2 o'clock, we have that rain moving in here from the southwest up to the northeast. Moderate light rain showers continue to around 11, 12 o'clock. So the second half of the day will be dry in a way. We'll start to see the rain move out, but then it comes the light flurries on the back side of the system later on Saturday afternoon and evening with some cooler temperatures on the way. First off, notice how the temperatures warm up into the 40s as we continue into the afternoon, but then we start to see them drop into the 30s by the evening. This will be the best opportunity to see that little changeover from maybe some little drizzle over to some light flurries. Rainfall amounts from a quarter to about a half inch of rain overnight into early tomorrow morning. Good news is that temperatures will remain above freezing in the mid and upper 30s, so don't really expect any black ice concerns. Snowfall amounts, not much. A dusting, a quarter of an inch, really not a big deal. So for tonight, we'll dip down into the mid 30s with a variable wind at about 5 miles per hour, and then after high temperatures in the 40s for tomorrow, 30s, and a lot of 30s from Sunday all the way through next Wednesday, but we will get back into the 40s on Thursday and Friday with a lot of sunshine as well. The Packers are, of course, no strangers to history, and now there's a little bit more. Coming up next, I'll tell you how a trio of tight ends recently entered the record books, plus the unique story of the latest rookie to find the end zone. That and more on the way in sports. NFL history. Three rookie tight ends have caught a touchdown for the Packers this season. According to the Elias Sports Bureau, it's the first time that's been done by any NFL team in the Super Bowl era. First Luke Musgrave, then Tucker Kraft, and now undrafted free agent Ben Sims has joined the party. What was that first Lambo League play? Oh man, I don't remember. <laughs> Unforgettable moment for Ben Sims, who grew up a Packers fan in the heart of Texas. I'd always kind of get made fun of what school wearing a Packer hoodie and everyone else has got a Dallas Cowboy or a Texas jersey on, but uh, my parents had got me this uh, pullover hoodie. Uh, it had a big package on the front, and then it was Clay Matthews' name and number on the back. I probably wear that thing every day. Sims visited the Packers last spring, but after going undrafted, he signed with the Vikings. They cut him after camp, and then Green Bay came calling. It's pretty awesome and uh, really surreal and unique. Uh, when I got to meet with the coaches and whatnot, I mentioned it briefly uh, that this was kind of a surreal moment for me just to be able to be in the building and uh, go see the stadium. And, and then, you know, things work out the way they do, and I end up here, and I couldn't be happier to be here. Over the season, his role has gradually increased. The recent injury to Musgrave opened the door to more playing time. Against the Chiefs, Sims played a career-high 20 snaps. He's approached it the right way from day one. He's got a guy that he cares about what he's doing and he comes in with a great attitude and just goes to work and you know it's been a lot of fun to watch the growth of all those young guys. And that hard work is paying off. Sims has been a small but crucial part of Green Bay's ascending offense. The offense is buying in. We're playing together. Uh, we're 11 men working as one uh, and when we do that good things happen.
And a quick update from today's practice. Aaron Jones limited for the second straight day. He says he's getting better, and tomorrow will be important for determining whether or not he can play Monday. I'm feeling better, uh, you know, just being able to get back out there with my guys. I was uh, involved in Indian groups, so uh, just making that progress, and hopefully I can come out tomorrow and uh, get involved in some, to some team. I think the, that'll be kind of telling and helpful going forward. Some other notables on the injury report. Christian Watson and Quay Walker held out for the second straight day. Darnell Savage returns after missing yesterday. Jair Alexander once again limited. That's all for sports. We'll see you back here tonight at 10 for some high school hoops, which includes a top five matchup in Hortonville. Until then, I'm Brandon Kinnard, NBC 26 Sports. Temperatures in the lower and mid 50s today in Winnebago County, making it another warm day and warmer than what we saw yesterday. We will have the clouds starting to build in here, however, as we head into tonight. And by tomorrow, it looks like rain showers will be welcoming us as we wake up in the morning hours before we start to see a wrap up by the afternoon. Highs for tomorrow will be in the upper 30s and lower 40s, but for tonight, staying mild, upper 30s. However, we're not going to be warming up by much as we head into tomorrow afternoon. This weekend, the jolliest man around is coming to town. That's right, on Saturday, you can have breakfast with Santa right here in Pulaski. Breakfast with Santa starts at 9 a.m. on Saturday, December 9th at Pulaski Community Middle School at 911 St. Augustine Street. Tickets are being sold at the door. Entry costs $10 for adults, $5 for kids 12 and under, and for senior citizens. Food and pictures with Santa are just part of the fun. There will also be live music. The money being raised at Breakfast with Santa is supporting the Pulaski Lions Club. Reporting in Pulaski, Perry Apostolakos, NBC 26. This weekend in Door County, you can attend Bailey's Harbor's holiday celebrations on Saturday. Taking place at the Bailey's Harbor Town Hall lawn, Santa and his reindeer will be there along with holiday music and delicious Christmas treats. The tree lighting takes place at 6 p.m. The Bailey's Harbor Town Hall Auditorium will also have holiday shopping from 3 to 6 p.m. And at the Ridges Sanctuary, they'll have holiday crafts, guided hikes and tours, wreath making and more. This takes place from 4 to 6 p.m. You won't want to miss it. Enjoy your weekend in Door County. Caitlin Holt, NBC 26. Well, it does appear that we'll be kind of trimming 10 degrees each day after today. Today we had highs in the low 50s. Tomorrow we'll be in the low 40s. And then on Sunday we'll be in the low 30s. But we won't go into the lower 20s on Monday as we head into this weekend. I'll do it for us tonight here at 6 o'clock for NBC 26. I'm Nina Sperano at Pottawatomie State Park. We'll see you next time.